Rule nine, never take a patient's concerns lightly and dismiss them. So if a patient ever wants to talk to you, ever has a concern, ever, um, you know, doesn't want to be discharged or has some symptom, you must take their concerns seriously um, to an extent, you know, and we'll discuss this further now, but never take them lightly or dismiss them. Keeping with that, rule 10 is to explore the patient's concerns over reassuring them blindly, even if it's a minor issue. I talked about this before as well. Do not reassure them blindly that they'll be fine, that it's nothing. Um, it's absolutely inappropriate and there might be something wrong. There might be something serious going on or sinister going on. And to blindly reassure them and give them false hope is very inappropriate and very distressing at a later stage for the patients. Um, so keeping in mind rule nine and rule 10, let's move on to the questions. You're working on a surgical ward and are on your way to check the discharge of a post-operative patient, Joanne, or Joan, who is due to be transferred to a rehabilitation hospital. You've been advised by the ward manager that Joan's bed is needed urgently for a newly arrived patient. When you arrive at Joan's cubicle, her daughter, Ali, tells you that her mother has been complaining about her chest and is struggling with a cough. You review the observation chart and listen to Joan's chest, which does not indicate a problem. Ali insists that her mother has a chest infection and should not be discharged. Please pause and rank the appropriateness of the following options. So the answer is C, E, A, B, D. Why? So first of all, C says, advise Ali that you will delay the transfer in order to consult with a senior member of your team. This is great because you haven't um, just dismissed the patient's concerns. Although you've listened to her chest and you feel like there isn't an issue, you're a junior doctor, you're an FY1, you don't know anything, and it's just much better to be safe. Always think about patient safety and delaying the transfer won't be an issue. Um, although, yes, okay, you do need her bed, but it's more important to safeguard this patient and then we can figure out the bed later. So that's the most appropriate option. The next best answer is E. Contact the rehab hospital and write detailed notes outlining Joanne's symptoms and possible investigations to send with her. This is great because you're contacting the hospital yourself. So you're doing a handover yourself and you're writing notes about what's happening. And uh, basically it's a good handover rather than A, where you're asking the ward nurse to inform the rehab hospital. Again, if you can do something directly and solve the problem yourself, please do it yourself. Do a handover yourself. Do not have it done through a nurse or through another doctor if possible. So that's why A comes after E. And then we have B and D left. So B says, inform Ali that she should insist on a further review of Joan's condition when she arrives at the hospital. Or D is to advise Ali that you urgently need the bed that her mother is on. That's absolutely always the wrong option. Never choose that. Never tell patients that, you know, you need their bed or they're just a bed. Um, and that's absolutely distressing, doesn't answer any of the questions or any of the problems. So to tell her to insist on a review would be okay. But again, coming from a doctor, it's much better. Coming from a nurse, going officially as a handover is much better. But um, uh, B would still be more appropriate than D. Pause and read the rationale and then let's move on to the next question. You're working in the emergency department. Mrs. Gershbach, a 65-year-old female patient, is admitted with chest pain. This is her fifth attendance with chest pain in the last two weeks. She's been extensively investigated over this time and a cardiologist has documented that all investigations have been normal and that her pain is not cardiac in origin. Today, nothing on examination or any of the investigations suggests that her pain is a symptom of cardiac disease. There are no other worrying signs or symptoms. So this is one of those questions where you choose uh, the three most appropriate things. And we've included this because 
this is quite an interesting case when considering this rule and considering the last question. So um, pick the ones that you think are most appropriate and then we'll talk about them. So the answer is D E F. D, which is reassure Mrs. Gershback that her pain is definitely not a symptom of cardiac disease. E, ask a senior colleague to speak with Mrs. Gershback. And F, ask Mrs. Gershback if there is anything that she is worried about that might be causing her pain. So this is really interesting in contrast with all of the rules and the last question. Here you can clearly see that she's been extensively investigated, that the cardiologist has said it's not a cardiac origin and, you know, there are no other worrying signs or symptoms. So I want you to look at the question and really read what they're saying. Read every line, see what information they're giving you and take it at face value. Uh, they're not trying to trick you here. They're actually trying to uh, push you towards... Uh, you know, realizing that this might be a panic attack or this might be something different. Uh, this isn't a cardiac cause. And so the most appropriate would be to reassure her and have her speak with the senior and try to see if, you know, the pain could be possibly a um, panic attack. And so, you know, while it is important to keep these rules in mind that you know you should never take a patient's concerns lightly and you should explore the patient's concerns over uh, reassuring them blindly when there's a question like this where um, they're clearly stating that you know she's been investigated and this is not cardiac then you really need to look at um, other options and um, you know not make it a medical issue and not make it a big issue as uh, the patient would like it to be maybe. So you can pause and read the rationale there and then let's move on to rule number 11. 